Hi guys, thanks for joining me today. I'm Marilyn and my channel's Making with Marilyn. Now I do all things crafty, but on tonight's video, I'm going to show you some rhinestones that I received. I'm going to show you how I made a rhinestone template, and then we're going to press it onto this shirt. So I'm holding this up because look, if I put it down, look how glary that is. <laughs> but I really want you to see the brilliance and the beauty of these rhinestones. So these are rhinestones that I got from the baby's booty. And she does a rhinestone buy-in uh, basically once a month. I think she said she'd take December off. And this is a product that she's going to offer starting in her next buy-in. Now our next buy-in is April 24th. So I'm going to put a link to her YouTube channel and her rhinestone store in the description below. But let me show you what's in this set. This is a treasure trove and a treasure trove is a collection of rhinestones. She's offering these because she sells in bulk. And this is still considered bulk, but instead of having to order 250 gross of one color, you get six different colors in this set, 100 gross each. So this is the AB collection. AB stands for Aurora Borealis, and an AB coating gives a beautiful iridescent feature over the top of the rhinestones. And in today's video, we're going to use this beautiful champagne. This is kind of a light golden brown, and then that AB coating that makes some pinks and some blues and some purples just come out of those stones. Now these are some more of her stones. These are the Crystal AB. So I have SS6s in the Crystal AB and then SS10s in the Crystal AB. So in this video I'm going to use my Champagne AB and then for part of my design I'm going to use a white HTB. I'm actually going to use Rhinestone Flock tonight I've had some issues with my Cricut not making the holes complete. So it cut through flock beautifully, but it just left a little piece of each circle that was attached. Well, I borrowed a Cricut maker of my friends, so I'm going to give this a try. Now I'm going to go ahead and move to the computer, and I want to show you this design I'm making tonight. So on this video, I'm going to make a type of rhinestone template that I've never made before. And that is to just do an outline of your word. So number one, if you're trying to save on stones, or number two, you're fairly new to rhinestone templates, but you want to try to design your own, I think this is a good project to start with. So I'm going to click right here on the letter A. This is my text tool. Then I'll click over here, and I'm going to type the word SPARKLE in all caps. I want a different font, so I'll click off of it, back onto it, and then right up here, I'm going to go down to the font Sign Painter. Then I want my design to be about 11 inches wide. I don't get too concerned with exactness yet because you are going to move some things around. Actually, I'll make it a little bit smaller. And then I'd like my design to be about 4 inches tall. Now notice it says it's 4.4, but the letters are only about 3. So with it all selected, I can go up to Object, Convert to Path, and the lines come in around the word and it's more precise. So it's 3.2 inches tall. I want it to be closer to 4 inches. So I'll just go right there. Now if you wanted to, from here, you could go straight over here to the rhinestone panel tool. Click on that. And then right here you could click on this. It's going to put rhinestones around the edge of each letter. So let's see what that looks like. And that's actually pretty cute. I could move them a little bit closer together instead of 0.039. Let's just go 0.030. So that's not bad. That's how easy it could be. But we're going to do a little bit more. Let me go back to no rhinestones. Then I'm going to go up to object and ungroup. I want to move my letters apart because I'm going to put an offset around each one. When you put an offset around the letters, it bulks up the letter without having to stretch or make taller your design. It's really just a way to make each individual letter, like I said, just kind of bulkier. But if you don't move your letters apart, sometimes your offset can run into each other, and I don't want that. So I'm going to move those apart. Now let's go back and see how wide this is. I'll narrow it up just a little bit. Then I'm going to go ahead and go back to Object and Group. 
Now the offset feature is right here, so I'm going to click on this and it'll open the offset panel. And I'm going to do an offset, not an internal offset. Right now it's at 0.068, that's what I used last, and that looks pretty good. I think I'll go 0.07. Then to keep that you have to say apply. Now I can drag my original word off. I can just save it down here in case I might use it later. I'll click back up on this part of the design and actually even though my word was grouped each one of those is individual. So I'm going to select all of them, go to offset, and group those back together. So now let's go back to that rhinestone feature, put them around the edge, and that's really cute. Now I see two of them are touching down here, so I'm going to go to Object, Ungroup. Now I can move each letter over by itself. So I'll move that off of that L. I think the A and the R are kind of close. Let's just grab those three, move them to the left. I'll grab those two, move those to the left. And then I'll take this S and move it over. All right, so let's see how wide my design is. It's 11.2. That wouldn't be a bad size, except I only have about 11 and a half inches of flock. So I really want to keep mine at 11. So what I'm going to do is just drag this corner in. Notice it changes the numbers of rhinestones. Right now I'm at 5.75. If I pull it in some more, I'm down to 5.58. Okay, let's make this a little taller. And then I still think those could be separated some, so I'll go back to object. Okay, so it is still ungrouped. I can Okay, I'll click off of it, back on it, move my E over, move my K over, or my L, whatever I just moved. We'll move those a little bit to the left. And you can just keep playing with your letters until you like the spacing. All right, so let's see how wide that is. Just over 11 inches. I think that's going to be fine. Now let's see what these look like if they're a color. Let's highlight all of them, go up to the fill panel. And mine are going to be a champagne color. That might be the closest color there is. That does not look great. Let's go ahead and change them to purple. Okay, so I'm going to blow this up so I can see if any of those are touching. You don't want your rhinestones touching because if they are, you're going to have a problem cutting your flock or your cardstock, whatever you're using as your template material. Okay, they all look pretty good. I see one thing I'm really not that fond of, and that's how this goes out like that. I think it would be streamlined and look better if they were just straight. So this is not necessary, this does complicate things, but I'm going to click on this A, I'll go back to Rhinestone Panel, and I'll say Release Rhinestones. Notice how it makes each one individual. So I'm just going to go ahead and click that one and delete it, and then I'll move this one up into place. And then I can either just drag these, or I can click on it and use my up arrow, or my side arrows, my down arrow. Whatever's easiest for you. I could even grab a bunch of these and I could go up and say object, align, and space vertically. And it kind of spaces them out so that they're more even. All right, let's go over here, delete one of those, move the other one over. I might as well grab a few of these, use that same feature, object, align, space vertically. Whoops, I grabbed more than I wanted. Let me go ahead and go back on that. I didn't realize I grabbed so many. All right, let's see if this works out better. Now, I'm going to hold the shift key down and add a few more to it. Then object, align, space vertically, 
and I spaced them out a little bit. I just think that looks a little bit cleaner. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and group all these together. Then to make it come into Cricut easier, I'm going to go back, select the whole thing, go to Object, Make Compound Path. Okay, now I've been having this issue, so here's what I did to fix it. Let me go back. With everything selected, I said Release Rhinestones. That takes just a minute for that to take effect. You can see they're all individual now. Then I went back and I said Object, Group, Then with them still selected, I said Object, Make Compound Path. And that fixed it. I don't know why, I don't know what that little glitch is, but I did have to go back to the Rhinestone panel, say Release them, then Group them, then Convert to the Compound Path. So if you're having issues, try that. So now I'm going to go ahead and save this, and I want to save it with my measurements. So I'll say File, Save As, I want to save it to my hard drive, and I'm going to name it Sparkle 11.228x, meaning by 3.972. And putting the dimensions in the name of your file is very, very helpful because when you take this into Cricut, it's probably not going to be the right size. Now I want to save this as an SVG, and then I'll say OK. All right, I'm going to do the rest of my design in Cricut. So let's go ahead and close this out and open up Cricut. I could make the whole design here, but I'd rather just do it in Cricut. It's easy, it's fast, and so that's what I'll do. Now that I'm in Cricut and I have a new canvas open, I'm going to say Upload, Upload Image, and then I'm going to go browse my desktop, find my file, and bring it in. Okay, it's right here, so I'll just say Open, it's already in SVG, so now I can just say Upload. Then I'll click on it, and I'll say Add to Canvas. Now one thing I'll need to do is go ahead, because I didn't realize I still had this word on it. Let me hit Ungroup, then I'll go ahead and just delete this. Then I can see what the dimensions are of the word Sparkle. And you can see that came in way too small. The width of that was supposed to be 11.228, and the height was supposed to be 3.972. So with it selected, let me go up to the width, and I'm going to change the width to the correct width, which was 11.228. Now when I hit the return button, this should change, and it should change to approximately 3.972 tall. So let's see what happens. Okay, and it did. That's just perfect. So let's go ahead and finish out this design. I'm going to click on text, and then in all lowercase, I'm going to type the word like you mean it, exclamation mark. And then I'll come up here to where the fonts are, and I'm going to type in the word sign so I can find sign painter. And there it is. So I'll drag this to about the size I want it. go a little bit narrower, and then I'll unlock the proportions, and I'll make it just a little bit taller. Okay, so each letter, each regular size letter is about an inch tall. Let's go just a tiny bit taller than that. Then, so that I don't have cut lines in between. Let me show you what I mean. Let me turn this just a white color. See all those cut lines? So that I don't have those, I need to go right here to Weld, click it, and they go away. So if I was cutting this out of all one material, I'd want to go up here to Align and say Center Horizontally. It really doesn't matter in my case because they're being cut out of two different things. Now let's zoom in on this and see how that looks. Those are a little bit close, but I'm going to go with it. I should have moved those apart just a little bit before I got out of silhouette. 
And then just so I don't forget, I'm going to go ahead and take this now and I'll say flip horizontal. So I'm going to say make it and I want to start with my rhinestone flock. I'm going to move that down just a little bit so that I have some space above it. I'll say continue. Now I've made my own custom settings, so let me go to Browse All Materials, and then I'll just type in Rhinestone, and here it is. Let me click down on Material Setting. You can see what I did. I used a setting that Patrice of Craftable Things told me to use, and that's 340 for the pressure. Off means it's just going to cut once using the fine point blade. So I'll go back, and I'll select that this time. So I'll say Done and I'm ready to cut. Now when I go do the other part, this part right here, I'll change my settings to HTV. You have to make sure it's mirrored, then I'm going to meet you back over at the table. Okay, so here's my rhinestone flock. Now I cut it without the backing. And so hopefully almost all of the little pink dots are left on my Cricut mat. So let's see. Please be left on my mat. Look at that. Oh my goodness, I have never had this happen before. Now, I did use a fairly new Cricut mat. I thought maybe that would help in keeping those little flock dots stuck down. Now, I've used cardstock before, and it is less expensive, but this flock, this is kind of the gold standard. It makes it easier to brush your rhinestones in. So I've gone ahead and just stuck that to my table. When I'm done, I'm going to put that on a chopping mat that I got from the Dollar Tree store. But for now, I'm just going to put it straight on my table. Then here's the stones. So I think what I'll do is just pour a bunch in the lid. I typically put more on than I need, but I'm getting better <laughs> at kind of guesstimating how many I'll need. I don't feel like that's quite enough. To me, I find that it's easier to get them to bump into place if you have more than you need, but that's just my personal preference. Okay, so I'm going to take my little paintbrush. This is a trim brush. You can get it at Walmart, Home Depot, Lowe's. You can order these on Amazon. I ordered it on Amazon. I got two of them. It really wasn't very expensive. And I live in a small town, so it's just not easy to run to Walmart or any of those stores. You have to travel quite a ways to get there. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get basically most of the holes filled. And then, like I said, you can see I put way too many on here. So I'm going to just start brushing some off. Then after I brush them off, I can use my little wax tool, fill any of the holes that don't have rhinestones in them, and then look for any that might be upside down. Okay, I have a few extras still on here, so I'll go ahead and just kind of keep working on this. I honestly don't mind using the wax tool and filling the little holes at the end. On this flock, they fill in so nicely, I'm probably not going to have to do a lot of that. Okay, I see an empty hole right there. Let's see if I can get that to fill in. Then oftentimes you're going to have a few extras that get stuck on top of your other rhinestones. So before you pick these up with your rhinestone heat tape or your transfer tape, you want to look it over really well. It 
So at this point, it's easier to me to just start moving them with my wax tool. So I'm just going to grab some extras one at a time and put them in the empty circles. Now I have an extra one here, so I'll just grab it move it up to where I need it. I probably could have done a better job over here with my little trim brush. I didn't notice there were that many missing or I would have just thrown a few more on there. But again, I really don't mind this part. Okay, so obviously my eye was drawn to over here. I was really focusing on that. Had more circles over here unfilled than I really should have, but I don't mind moving them one by one. So I want to look this over really well, look for any extra rhinestones, look for upside down rhinestones, and then look for holes that still need to be filled. Okay, I think that's good. So let me move these extra ones out of the way because when I put my hot fix tape down, I don't want to accidentally grab some extras. Now you can do it either way. This hot fix tape can be bigger than your flock, but if it is no bigger or no larger than your flock or your cardstock or whatever you're using, I think that's easiest. That way it's not sticking to the table. So I'm just going to peel the back off the front. Then I'm just going to lightly hold this with my fingers. I have it bent up, kind of like a taco, not quite that steep. And once I start going down with it, I have to just commit. If you put it down and pick it up, you're going to move your rhinestones, and it's just going to mess up your design. Okay, I think that went on really well. If you have any issues, let's say something shifted, you can just kind of take your fingernail and push through this hot fix tape. All right, so I want to push down, make sure that my rhinestones are really attached to my transfer tape or my hot fix tape. Otherwise, they won't lift up. Then when it's time to lift it up, I'll lift it up slowly. And if I see that any rhinestones are still down in the hole, I'll put the transfer tape back down, rub, lift it back up. All right, so let's check that out now. I'm just going to start at a corner, lift up slowly. They're all coming up. But like I said, if one was still there, you just put it back down, rub on it, and pick it back up. But these are coming up all very nicely. Now when you're getting to the end, you want to make sure this doesn't accidentally fold into itself, because <laughs> it will stick together. That happened to me one of the first times I did a rhinestone template, and it was a mess. Now you can get these little chopping mats at the Dollar Tree store and the baby's booty that sells these rhinestones. She had this on one of her favorites videos. And in essence, you stick your template down to this chopping mat and it protects it from getting bent or dirty. It's just a good way to store them. Then next time you use it, you can just leave it on the chopping mat, put your chopping mat on your table and you'll be fine. Now I don't think I recorded this being cut, but this is the other part of my design, the heat transfer vinyl. Typically this weeds just super easily. Okay, so it's going to say sparkle like you mean it. It looks like I've got that weeded out just fine. So let's go ahead and move over to the heat press. Okay, I'm heating my heat press up to 350 and I'm going to press for 12 seconds. So here's how your rhinestones come. They come in these little ice boxes and it has a really nice label on the front. It tells you the size, the color, whether they're AB, and then the heat settings and the time setting. So she packages them really nice and she gives you all the information that you're going to need.
Now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and pre-press the shirt and then clean it with a lint roller. Now pre-pressing this for a little bit does two things. It helps flatten it out and then it helps remove any moisture that might be in the fibers. And then just to make sure I have a clean surface, I'm going to go ahead and lint roll this and remove any lint or any excess fibers. Now remember, we have two layers. We have the rhinestone layer and we have the HTV. HTV is thinner than the rhinestones, so it really needs to be pressed on first to get good pressure. But to know where to put it, I really need to put the rhinestone template down. So let me just go ahead and get these situated where I want them. Now the other thing, the HTV takes a lower temperature, so I went ahead and turned my heat press down to 300 to do it. Then I'll turn it back up to 350 for the stones. Now while that's heating up, I went ahead and trimmed down the bottom part of my hot fix tape because I didn't want it on top of my HDV because I think it would leave a little indention in it. I'm going to go ahead and put a Teflon sheet over my HTV just to protect it in case it would melt. Now don't just wad this hot fix tape up, you can reuse it. Okay, here's the final shirt and it's gorgeous. Now I'm looking up at the camera and I just don't see in the camera what I see in real life. In the camera, these stones look kind of like a crystal AB or a crystal. But in my eye, they're very much kind of a light golden brown with pinks, blues, and purples popping out of them. They are stunning. Thanks so much for joining me, and until my next video, bye-bye.